If you have been following along with the Pyro EDU courses, you have no doubt noticed that building analog electronics and digital electronics each require a different way of thinking. Our digital electronics relied on a clock signal to drive them, and there were only two possible states, logic 0 and logic 1, which we always defined as plus 5 volts and plus 0 volt. When it comes to microcontrollers, this rule does not change, and since microcontrollers are inherently digital, they require a way to interface with the real analog world. And to do this, most microcontrollers have what are called analog to digital converters. These modules use a power and ground reference to create an integer value that represents the input voltage. Let's look at an example. Pretend a voltage of plus 1.75 volts was input into analog input 0. To understand how the microcontroller converts this from an analog value to a digital integer, we have to do some math. First, here's what we know. The analog input voltage is plus 1.75 volts. Our microcontroller's power supply uses plus 5 volts. And the microcontroller's analog to digital converter produces a 10-bit binary value, which means the maximum conversion value would be 1023. To find the digital value, you use this formula, analog input voltage divided by the reference voltage of our power supply multiplied by the resolution of the analog to digital converter. After plugging in our values, we find that the digital representation of plus 1.75 volts by the ATmega328 will be 358. This might seem like a strange conversion process, but after some time you'll get it down pat and it will be second nature. Since AC electrical signals have voltages that are constantly changing, microcontrollers will often be continuously using the analog to digital converter modules to keep up with the changes. DC voltage levels are more natural for our digital devices since they stay steady and yield logic 0 or logic 1 on our digital inputs. The schematic for this lesson's experiment is similar to some of the previous lessons but let's go through it part by part to see what is connected and where. The power supply regulator circuit uses a 9 volt battery, 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, two bypass capacitors, and a resistor plus red LED for notification that power is good. The ATmega328 microcontroller connects to plus 5 volt power and ground. The reset circuitry uses a push button that connects to pin 1 of the microcontroller and to ground. Then a plus 5 volt pull-up resistor is added to pin 1. The USB to serial converter module connects to the TX and RX pins of the microcontroller. Its ground connects to the circuit's ground and then the DTR pin connects to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor that then connects to pin 1 of the microcontroller. The frequency control circuit uses a 16 MHz crystal with two 22 picofarad capacitors. The crystal connects to pins X1 and X2 of the microcontroller. And finally, we'll use a 10 kilo ohm trim pot. The center output pin of the trim pot connects to the analog zero input, and the two outer pins connect to plus five volt power and to ground. The LED output that we'll use connects digital pin 11 to a 100 ohm resistor which connects to a red LED and then to ground. Our circuit is complete. The trim pot will give us a way to vary voltage input to the analog zero pin, and the LED will allow us a way to correlate output to that analog input. Before we move to the software side of this project, let's take a look at the Arduino program functions for analog input and output. The first function is the analog read function, we will use this to read and convert the analog value. As the function says, it takes about 100 microseconds to read an analog value. Here in the reference, they have all the finer details about how this function works. The second function is the analog write function. This is actually a digital function in disguise since it outputs something called PWM. The analog write function must be given a value between 0 and 255 which then sets the output to that magnitude. The software side of this experiment will start out the same as before with a setup and a loop function. We'll add an integer to hold the analog to digital value 
and then initialize pin 11 as a digital output. Inside the loop function, we first read the voltage at analog zero's input, convert it to a digital number, and store it in the val integer. After that conversion, we spend the rest of the program evaluating this value with if and else if conditional statements. The first if statement checks if val is greater than 1000. Remember the maximum value that can be converted by our 10-bit analog to digital converter is 1023. So 1000 is pretty much the limit. Therefore, if it's over 1000, we want the LED to be fully on to represent that. To do that, we use the analog write function writing to digital pin 11 with a 250 value. Remember, the maximum input for the analog write function is 255. Following this if statement, we'll use what are called else if statements. These else if statements are checked only if the previous if or previous else if statements above it were not true. So in this else if statement, we check if val is greater than 800. If that's true, then we'll do an analog write to the LED at digital pin 11 with a comparatively high value of 175. We'll add a few more else if statements, slowly decreasing the condition for val to be true, and similarly decreasing the analog write output to the LED at digital pin 11. So this code should yield a program that can change the output LED to six different brightness levels, which the analog write function sets. Take some time to look through this program, understand it, and play with it. This next program that we'll look at is much shorter and allows for smoother transitions from input to output. In this program, we will still use analog zero input and digital pin 11 output, but in the loop, we'll only use two functions. The analog read of analog pin zero stores the analog to digital conversion in the integer val. Remember again, this value is a 10-bit binary value that will be between zero and 1023. Next, we'll use the analog write function to digital pin 11 and input the integer val directly into it. However, since the analog write function can only take a value between 0 and 255, we need to divide the integer val by 4. This is a much shorter program, but it can be more difficult to understand since so many things are happening all at once and in many different places. So enough with the theory. Let's get to experimenting and building so that we can really understand this stuff. We saw all the parts that we'll be using in the schematic diagram, but let's go through them one by one to clarify what they look like so there is no question in your mind. The big parts we need are a jumper wire kit, the parts kit, and a breadboard. From the parts kit, we'll be using a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, two 100 ohm resistors, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, one 0.1 microfarad capacitor, two 10 microfarad capacitors, a push button, an AT Mega 328 microcontroller with Arduino compatible bootloader, a 16 megahertz crystal, two red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, a nine volt battery connector, four jumper wires, a USB to serial converter module with jumper wires, and finally, a 9 volt battery and a laptop with the Arduino IDE installed. With all the parts gathered together, let's assemble the circuit. As in the previous lesson, we'll use a faster time lapse since you have seen most of this construction process before. And the last four connections are the jumper wires connecting the USB to serial converter to the microcontroller for programming. Now connect the USB to serial converter to your computer and power up the circuit. Then load the first program we wrote into the Arduino IDE and click the upload button. After a few moments, the program is loaded and so use a screwdriver or a fingernail to change the position of the trim pot. You can see, as we increase the trim pot, the LED gradually becomes brighter and brighter, 
much like the brightness control on an MP3 player or a television set. Similarly, as we decrease the trim pot, the LED gradually dims. However, it looks very choppy and the brightness changes are very noticeable. Let's move to the second program to see a smoother transition. Load up the second program in the Arduino IDE and upload it to the microcontroller. This time, when we change the trim pot, the LED brightness changes much more smoothly. This happens because the brightness of the LED now has a resolution of 256 brightness levels instead of our dumb 6 brightness levels in the first program. In the real world, you don't have to look very far to see something that offers analog output. From cell phone antennas to clock radios and televisions to radar, many things emit analog signals that digital devices like microcontrollers can't inherently understand. However, when we add an analog to digital converter to the mix, all of a sudden we can numerically quantify an analog signal as an integer and make use of the analog signal's voltage information to drive digital outputs. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Up to this point, we have covered the basics of microcontroller operation. Now it's time to dive into more advanced topics. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at two ways of getting input, polling for it, and using interrupts.